Hello and welcome back to another Elden Ring video. Today I'm going to be doing a tier list of all the Spirit Ashes, and this will include the Spirit Ashes from Shadow of the Earth Tree. Most of the video is just going to be me talking with the tier list here and placing Spirit Ashes into the tier list. So it's more of a background video. I'll leave a link in the description of all of the tests that I did. We have the Avianet Soldier Ashes, and so those actually did pretty well. They got Rolana to half health, and they were able to do decent against Tree Sentinel. I think the more important thing here is how they rank up to the DLC, so I'm mostly going to be quoting the Rolana testing that I was doing. Then we have the Azula Beastmen, which are good. They're on the same tier as the Avianet Spirit Ashes, however, I feel like the Azula Beastmen are a little bit better just because the Avianet Spirit Ashes rely on bleed. Azula Beastmen are just kind of a high DPS option, and they're actually decently tanky since there's two of them. Oh. And before I get too far, this is only factoring the solo performance, so stuff like Tish, or if we scroll down here, um, any of the archers or any of the like support characters aren't going to be ranked that high. I do realize that's a limitation of my testing, but this is the most relevant that I could figure most people would be using Spirit Ashes for. Obviously, for if you're a good player, you really don't need to use Spirit Ashes. But if you would, it's mostly just to take pressure off, and so that would just be how well they can tank. Then we have the Banished Knight Oleg and Enval. And so... These are the same. They are decent, def definitely B tier. They were able to do some decent damage to Tree Sentinel and Rolana. But it's overall not as good as the Zula Beastmen and the other things that are going to be A tier and S tier. And if you're wondering why I'm doing these weird pauses, I'm switching over to uh, my secondary monitor here and checking on the data that I have. So Battle Mage Hugh, um, Battle Mage Hugh is not that good as a support character, like a caster. It's fine, but as soon as he goes into melee, uh, he just crumbles. Just, like, absolutely crumbles. And we have Tish. Now, in my testing, it was um, patch 1.12.1, which Tish was bugged against the DLC bosses where they would heal him up after the Deaths and Death effect expired. So... I did account for that in my testing, and since they fixed it, I bumped Tish up a little bit. And so, it's definitely on the very high side of A. I don't think it's quite S tier. Um, there are a few Ashes that are actually like really good, but for the FP cost and the solo capabilities, it just isn't as good as everyone says. Obviously, if you're a mage or gonna do like a tank play style where you can take pressure off of Tish, it's gonna do a lot better. But as a pure solo, it's not good. Then we have the Black Flame Monk. It's good, kind of. It's not as tanky as I would perhaps like, but it can do good DPS just because of the Black Flame effect. And it serves as basically just an upgrade to the Fire Monk. And. It's kind of all there is to say. It's not super important. So then we have the Bloodhound Knight. This one actually surprised me as for how well it tried to... Um, it was able to tank Rolana. But on Tree Sentinel, it just isn't as good. The Revered Spirit Ashes really do make a difference in how tanky some of these summons are. It's a glass cannon in the base game. And it can do good damage, but it also dies really fast. Then we have the Clayman. Uh, they are okay. I'm gonna put them in like a high D tier. They are 
uh, bad, just based on the data, but they're tanky enough where if you were tanking um, and the boss just happens to jump onto them, they still do good damage, but they can also tank a little bit. And we have Clean Rot Knight Finlay, definitely a B tier. And holy damage doesn't help, but it can proc rot. And so it really depends. Like, if you get the rock prod off, it's going to be good. But if you can't, it's not going to be that good. And same thing here with the Crystallion. Uh, Crystallion's going to be B tier. It's fine. It's really tanky until it gets poise broken. And after that, it crumbles. And it doesn't really have that good of damage. Then we have the Demi Humans. This actually kind of surprised me. Um, I didn't really think it would be that good, but against Rolana, since there's so many of them, they were able to chunk her down to half HP, which is really impressive. But unfortunately, since we did it against Draconic Tree Sentinel, it the AoEs just kind of killed them off super fast. Then we have the uh, Depraved Perfumer Carmen. For, as far as the Perfumer Ashes go, this is probably the better one. Just because Trishka doesn't have that good of an effect, but it's really bad as far as damage. It just doesn't do that much. Then we have Dolores, the Sleeping Arrow. And this is definitely going to be just D tier. And I have 2 to 3 here, um, in case you guys are wondering. It does depend on how well they did against Rolana and Draconic Tree Sentinel. So some were good against Rolana, and they got two points against her, got her down to like 75% HP, and were bad against Draconic Tree Sentinel. That only counts as one point if you get it between 100 and 75%. So Dolores, or not Dolores, um, the Parade for Humor got three points. So it's kind of on the edge of C and D. Then we have Dung Eater. And it's going to go, yeah, probably right behind Tish. It's a good summon. It's an NPC summon, so it's affected by Deathblade. And it can be one shot with Radon's Grab. But it's decently tanky, and it can output some decent DPS. On top of debuffing the damage negation of whatever it's fighting. We have the Fanged Imp Ashes. It's solidly C tier. It's not horrible, but it's not good. Uh, they are able to do some decent stuff with bleed, but outside of that, they're really not that good. Then we have uh, Finger Maiden. She's in D tier as far as her damage output goes, but since she doesn't have a weapon and she can only heal, I'm going to put her in C. Uh, definitely something that is better as a uh, player than as a solo summon. And we have the Fire Monk Ashes, which are in C tier. They're gonna be, as I said, just a worse version of Black Flame Monk. I don't know why FromSoft always loves to do this, but whatever. And we have the Lone Wolf Ashes. These are really good for when you get them. Just because of the damage they can do as a group. Then, uh, the Mad Pumpkin Ashes. They are definitely solid again. They're going to be in B tier. Uh, they're really tanky if enemies attack them from the front and they do decent damage, but as soon as they get behind, they start to crumble. Then we have the, um, Manserfant Ashes. Which are going to be kind of like a high D tier. Uh, they have three points. So they don't do good damage. And they have an AoE, which bosses that are slow will stand in that and get continuous damage. Then we have the Marionette Soldier Ashes. These surprised me against Rolana. Um, they were... Probably put them over here in the middle. They were very good at range and even close they were able to do some decent damage to her getting down, her down to half health which is really impressive and we have the Maliseum soldier ashes 
These guys punched way up above their weight class. And so these guys actually managed to get to S tier. And I'm not quite sure if it's just because it's a group of them and they're able to dish out a lot of damage or if they really are just that good. And as far as Spear Dashes are concerned, them teleporting isn't really a big issue because the bosses still can lock onto them, which is really nice. And then we have the uh, best of the best, the Mimic tier. This is heavily build dependent, but as I've shown in my past video, you can solo any boss in the game. Then we have the uh, Miranda Sprouts. It's it's a point. It's basically a less tanky and more mobile land squirt. But they're able to poison the boss. They don't do any damage outside of that. But they're able to poison the boss really well, and they can just like run around and have the boss attack them, dry egg roll, which is kind of nice. The Feli Lou is definitely good. She's um, kind of a high up high end of A tier, kind of a 7. Uh, she's not very tanky, but she does good damage, so yeah. And along the same vein, we have the Night Maiden puppets. They do good damage, and they're not super tanky. Uh, we have the Noble Sorcerer. Uh, as expected, it's just trash. Same thing with the Frenzy Merchant. Or the Nomad Ashes, sorry. And we have Omen Killer Rolo. It's a B tier. I'd say it's decent. It can do good damage, but once the enemy locks onto it, that's kind of it. And then at the very low end of A tier, we have the Oracle Envoy. These guys, the Tooth Squad, are absolutely amazing at uh, dishing out damage to a boss, and they can still good, do good damage since there's four of them in melee, but they're definitely much better at range. Page Ashes are again just trash. Perfume of Trishka, I'm gonna move to C tier, even though technically she belongs to D tier because the buff is actually good, but as far as a holo su uh, solo summon, just absolutely trash. Putrid Corpse are technically bad, but they're tanky, so you can maybe make something work if you're going to heal them. But otherwise, yeah, not super tanky. We have our Radon Soldier Ashes punching above their weight class. These guys are good, they're able to do a lot of damage. They have fire, which is nice for some bosses. The Rail Lucarian Soldier Ashes are definitely going to be worse. And that's mostly due to them losing out on a lot of the damage that the two better Soldier Ashes can do. Since it's the common soldiers and then it's the main soldier. And so they're a little bit tankier than the other two. Well, not compared to the... Then we have the Redmane Knight Olga. I'm gonna put it in C tier. It has some use, but as soon as it gets out of range... As soon as the boss gets into its range, uh, it, it kind of crumbles quickly. Even though it's supposed to be like a tankier version. Then we have the Rotten Stray. Same thing. C tier. It's unfortunate that it's not as good as maybe it should be, and that's mostly due to how the rot is procced. Like, it procs and then the dog dies, if it even gets it off. The skeletal bandit is actually worse than the skeletal. Militia, which is surprising to me. It's gonna go in D tier, like very low D, it's not good. But then the skeletal millet man are like a high D tier. I mean, so they're not like good, they're on the same tier, but it's weird that the like supposed, the supposedly better one is actually higher. 
Then we have the Soul Jars of Fortune. These guys were able to do decent damage, but as soon as they're hit with fire, uh, they die. The boss, and so that's kind of it for them. Jellyfish, unfortunately, is D tier. It's one that you get right away, but as soon as you get it, it's basically obsolete because you can also get the wolves, uh, which are in B tier, and they're just better overall. Which Stormhawk is this? Okay, no, this is a good one. This is Stormhawk Deeth. Um, he buffs your poise damage and your physical damage, and he's actually really good as a summon. Uh, but in a solo capacity, he is C tier. However, because he buffs your poise damage, I'm going to put him in B tier because he is actually that good. Uh, Twin Sight Social Sorcerer is bad. Vulgar Militia. Let's see, where are you? Ah, yes. This was able to do really good damage in against Rolana and still did decent damage against Tree Sentinel, but it was a little bit less. These guys were able to get Rolana down to half health, which is really impressive, because if you can bust a half health, that means you only have to deal with, well, half of its health as a if you're, they're soloing it, so. These guys are susceptible to AoEs. Uh, that's what ultimately killed them when Rolana got to her phase two, uh, is the AoEs were able to pick them off pretty easily because individually they don't have high health. So then we have the commoners, or uh, nobles. These guys are gonna go in D tier. Uh, obviously, they, they, they just suck. There's not really much to say about it. Warhawk Ashes, C tier. It, it's a fine option. You can, It's usable, but it's not good. The Winged Misbegotten, I feel like, had the potential to be good, but once it gets knocked out of the air, it's done for, like a lot of stuff. And Glintstone Sorcerer. Again, not very viable as a summon. Maybe if you weren't going to, if you were in a tank or, you know, you had something else to block the boss aggroing onto it, it could be better, but it's not within the testing parameters. Then we have the Godric Soldier Ashes. These guys are gonna be low A tier. Like most of the Soldier Ashes, they're actually really good, which I think a lot of people don't realize it's kind of slept on. Then we have the Great Shield Soldier Ashes. Again, uh, low A tier, but these guys are super tanky. Oh, I'm sorry. Godric Soldier Ashes are in B. Uh, Great Shield Soldiers are high A uh, because they're super tanky and they're actually able to do some decent DPS. If AoEs, boss has AoEs, they're not going to do as good, especially ones that come from the ground. But as far as, well, being tanks, they're quite good. Then we have the Halig Tree Soldier Ashes. I'm going to go in. B tier. These guys are good and they kind of go after the go bomb the boss once they're low health. The Jarrite Puppet is B tier. I I know some people rank this higher. I just don't see how. It doesn't have that much use. They have the Caden Cell Sword again just C tier. It's not great, it's not... I mean, I guess C is average, so... Yeah, it's fine. Kindred of Rot, same thing. It's... It's actually in B tier, but it's a low B. It can do good damage since it has pest threads. But... 
as soon as it gets into melee, it crumbles. Then we have the land squirts putting in work, apparently, going to A tier. Yeah. Yeah, that, that goes to A tier. Wow. Oh, guess I have two Latanas in here. Uh, as a solo capacity, it's horrible. And as a ranged capacity, it's horrible. I'd rather have something else. Then we have the Lindell source, uh, Lindell Soldier Ashes. Going into A tier. Low A, kind of the same as the Lance Quartz. And with the, kind of the same thing as the Great Shield Soldiers. Uh, they're tanky and they can dish out good damage, but there's only two of them. So, yeah. Luthiel the Headless is S tier. I don't think that's a surprise to anyone. It can, it's tanky, it does good damage, it can teleport. Which reduce, which increases its survivability and reduces the chance of a boss attacking it, so. Then we have the Albernark Ashes, high D tier, kind of, kind of right there. They're fine. Yeah. Ancestral Follower, low D. Some people would say this is good. As a solo capacity, it's not. Because as soon as it gets into melee, it crumbles. It's not good. Then we have the Ancient Dragon Knight Kristoff. Probably the most overrated Spirit Ash, I think. It's not good. It's really not. It's... It's Luthi the Headless, but without anything that makes Luthi the Headless good. Then we have the Archer Ashes. They're C tier, or D tier, I mean. And they're like a high D. These guys can dish out good DPS, but again, as soon as enemy comes into melee, they're, they're dead. Then we have a uh, DLC Spirit Ash. We have the Ancient Dragon Florisax at 3, so that's going to be high D. They have the Big Mouth. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Big Mouth Imp Ashes at low D. This one is probably the best ranged one that exists in the game right now, but as a solo summon, it sucks. They have Black Knife Cap and Hugh, which is C tier, and Andreas, which is slightly better at B tier. And this guy is tanky. This guy has good DPS and is not tanky. This guy is, has decent DPS and is tanky. And we have the Blood Fiend uh, Hexer or whatever it's called. Uh, it sucks. I, I think the uh, Mogwin Spear or whatever AoE it has is supposed to do damage to the boss but it doesn't and so it just looks stupid and is a waste of a spirit summon. Curseblade Mira, C tier. It's decent survivability and decent damage, but not not really notable outside of that. We have Demi Human, uh, Yoda on Ketamine. That's going to be A tier. It's actually uh, since it's so small and so jumpy. Its survivability is actually kind of high, even though it doesn't have much health. And it's able to do really good damage. And, let's see. I'd probably put it kind of right right above the Vulgar Militiaman. It's really good, and it's kind of funny to watch it spin around and do its little thing. We have the Divine Warrior Oris, And same thing. It's going to be A tier. I might put it, yeah, maybe right between the land squirt ashes. It's good, but it's not as tanky as I would like. It has high damage, but it's not as tanky as I'd like. 
I have a finger creeper ashes gonna go in C tier it technically should go in D tier but it can heal you and the heal is actually pretty strong the only problem is it likes to spam that it doesn't like to attack so as far as the solo capacity it's horrible but it does have a special effect then we have the fire knight Hilde or Quailene, I can't remember which is which. Either way, they're both C tier. Um, and obviously one's an NPC, so it's susceptible to Death Blight and Radon Scrap. Then we have the Gravebird Ashes. Unfortunately, these aren't very good. I actually kind of liked them, but they just don't have survivability, so not much you can do there. Then we have the Horned Warrior, that's what it is. Uh, okay. This is B tier. Uh, kind of same problems as the other soldier, or the other knights. It, it, it's kind of just the divine word, the divine bird guy, but worse, so. Then we have the Inquisitors. These guys suck. Uh, they do have like an AoE buff and a heal, but I've never actually had them affect me. I don't know what the range is, so it's either really low or it doesn't work. They have Joanne and Anna. Uh, two NPCs in one going in S tier. Yeah. They're good. Then we have the... Manfly Ashes. And that's an A tier, and yeah, I'd probably put them on the same, like right next to Land Swords as well. They proc Poison or Rod, I can't remember which one. There's three of them, and they actually are decent in melee. So, yeah. Then we have the Mesmer Soldier Ashes. Putting in work at high A, I'm gonna probably put it. Yeah, right there. Like, right up next to Tish. These guys do really good damage. They're tanky, they have shields. And all that. Spider Scorpion Ashes, unfortunately, suck. When I first got it, I'm like, ooh, this looks really good. I tried playing it with it a little bit. Um, I played through the DLC. Absolutely horrible. God awful. Then we have Joanne. Just by herself. She is really carried by the fact that her sister, or whatever they are, I'm not really sure the relation, I don't care about the lore that much, uh, both do bleed, so they're able to bleed up, they're able to bleed really fast, but by herself, she's not that good at bleed. Then we have Tathew, the Golem Smith, and so that's gonna be a high. Put him right here, right next to Tish in between the Mesmer Soldier Ashers. He very tanky, however, not super damaging. He's able to do good damage, don't get me wrong, but not super damaging. And he has low health, but he has super high absorption. So if you want to do like a healing thing, like uh, heal from afar or whatever, you don't need a lot of faith for him to be fully healed up. All right, so here's the final tier list. Uh, I'm sure some places are controversial, but again, this is mostly just does it have a special effect and how well can it summon, or how well can it solo as a summon. Now, if you want my recommendations for each tier, obviously Mimic, if not Mimic, uh, and you don't have access to the DLC, because otherwise it would be Joanna and Anna, uh, probably, probably the Soldier Ashes. Luthiel the Headless is good, don't get me wrong, but these guys have better DPS potential in my opinion. And since there's multiple of them, if one dies, it's not completely over. For A tier, definitely the Great Shield Soldier. Nothing else really comes close to it in terms of DPS and survivability. For B tier, I would have to go with either the Demi-Humans 
or Stormhawk Deep. The other ones are good, but the Demi Humans have good DPS, and Stormhawk Deep is good for buffing. In C tier, I really wouldn't recommend using any of them, but I, if I had to choose one, it would probably be the Miranda Sprouts, just because of the poison, and they're able to do good DPS. In D tier, just don't use anything in D tier. Anything in D tier, whatever niche it has, is probably in C or B or A tier somewhere in some form. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. And if you have any, uh, if you have your own tier list rankings, I would absolutely be happy to see them because I'm sure people have different priorities on what they want their Spirit Ash to do. In my case, I feel like for the average player that it's probably just as a solo capacity. In that case, the tier list would probably look a lot different, but overall I feel like this is probably the most accurate one. Thank you guys for watching, and if you have any ideas for what my next video should be as far as ranking or doing a deep dive into, please leave a comment down below. And I'll see you in the next video.